Welcome to the gathering and thank you for joining us. I'm Robin Durham. I'm glad you tuned in because we have a very special program for you today. I have with me in the studio Joshua Holmes. Joshua is the founder and CVO, Chief Visionary Officer, I love that, of STEEL. Uh, STEEL stands for uh, standing, transforming, encouraging, enlightening, and loving. Welcome to KPLE. Thank you very much. So Robin. glad that you're here. Um, Joshua has an amazing testimony. He is a vet that was injured, uh, wounded more than once yes. in uh, 2003 in Afghanistan and Iraq. in Iraq. And he um, has recovered and is, we're all in a process of recovering, but yes. God has used his story uh, for the good of the kingdom and I'm going to have him share some of it and uh, he has a ministry now and actually uh, was an associate pastor here in Colleen for a season uh, at First Assembly of God under Pastor Cecil. So uh, Joshua, thank you so much for coming in. I'm just really blessed to get to hear part of your story yes. and let's just start out um, with your initial injuries in 2003. Okay. Well, Robin, I'm, I'm so glad to be here uh, this morning, and I, I just want to uh, give a shout out to my wife and my kids. I mean, without them, I would be nothing. My wife is my spiritual backbone. She's the one that tells me, you know what I'm saying, when I, when I spiritually stink, she says, go pray. When I physically stink, she says, go take a shower. Okay. So she's my caregiver, and she takes That's care of wonderful. me. That's wonderful. And I would not be the man I am without a praying wife and a very godly family that, that fortifies me, helps me to do what we do today. Amen. Amen. Uh, but it was in 2003. Uh, that um, I, sir, I was stationed here on Fort Hood. Uh, I was with a 4th Infantry Division, the first tour in Iraq in 2003. Mm -hmm. And while I, was, uh, while I was deployed, I was injured three different times. Mm. And so I'm not gonna focus on the, the first two, I'm gonna focus more on, on, the, on the last injury, but I'm gonna go briefly into the first two because okay. it's, very part of, it's, very, it's a pebble that, mm -hmm. that secure the pillars of the foundation of my story. And so it was in 2003, 19 year old kid, didn't know what I was going into, you know what I'm saying, I joined the military January of 2001 uh, before 9-11 hit. And so I, I, I joined the military because I always had, would have had to question what if, you know. And so I, I didn't want to question it, I wanted to just embrace what my family has done. I come from a long history, my father, uh, my father could not serve in the military, uh, but he served in the Forestry Commission and my grandfather served in the military, my aunts, uncles, cousins. So your service family long generation, really. Yes. yes. And, and it burst from my grandfather who fought in World War II mm -hmm. as an engineer. Mm -hmm. And so I, when I joined the military, I, I came in just as a weekend warrior because I wanted just to, for the education and benefits, this, that, and the other. And um, after 9-11 hit, I, I decided that it hit, hit home. I wanted, to, I wanted to take it personal. So I, wanted, I, I got released from my a reserve unit and went active duty mm -hmm. uh, with with the former with my chain of command to do so, and so then I was stationed here on Fort Hood. When we got the orders to, we were supposed to go to Turkey at first, but then that all that got confused and shut down. So then we were told we were going to be in Kuwait for only six months, mm -hmm. and we'd come back home on a peacekeeping mission. Well, we went to Iraq, and that's what birthed Operation Iraqi Freedom, um, and so. I spent less than six days in Kuwait. Then we track. We we were in um, soft top Humvees and lateral tracks and um, howitzers. I was in a combat arms unit with artillery, and my, my physical job was to be a computer system specialist for artillery unit. Uh, it was called FDC, Fire Direction Control, and what my job was was to give all the intelligence for and to tell everyone where to move in the battlefield. I'm basically connecting all the, all the all the pieces that would be on a chessboard. I would tell everybody where they need to go to position themselves mm -hmm. strategically for the battlefield. <coughs> but Excuse me. That was my job, but what I actually physically did was I was a gunner, and because I was big, I was big back then. I was 197 pounds, big arms, big chest, 19 inch neck, you know, so I was, I was very big. They called me Ice, that was my nickname, because I was solid, but I was cool about it. I didn't let it go to my head. That's neat. So in June of 2003, while we were performing house raids, after we already had went through some of the insurgents and we've already, because there was third ID and then after third ID, there was, there was fourth, fourth ID. Um, and so we, we were there, uh, basically part of the, we were part of the first invasion, but we we're kind of cleanup crew for them, but also we had our own individual battles, which is kind of worse because if you're in first, then you just go through, you plow through everything. But because we're second, we had to clean up some of their stuff and then have our own individual missions while also trying to prepare the best way we could for the guys behind us to come through. 
uh, give them the best direction, this, that, and the other. This is when the Jessica Lynch and all the other aspects, uh, that all, everything happened, where the communications got lost. We had a lot, lot of different issues going on with the communication with our what's called FBCB2s, which is our basically a GPS system that mm -hmm. tells our vehicles where to go in the battlefield. Well, I can imagine that there was a tremendous amount of things that could go wrong. And, Correct. And uh, just being on a battlefield and mm -hmm. trying to, you know, navigate all that and you just the unexpected that comes. When yeah. were you injured? Well, in June of 2003, I was performing house raids, and there was an insurgent that was in the roof that I couldn't see, and mm -hmm. so. They called all clear, but they w it wasn't clear. And so I took two slugs in the chest. Mm -hmm. uh, the doctors told me two to five more pounds of pressure. I had armor on, but the doctors told me two to five more pounds of pressure would have broke my sternum, which would have slid a heart kill me instantly. Mm -hmm. And so I was asked, do you want to go home? I said, no, I was angry. At that time, I was angry. That's why I want to focus on the three points here, because and when, when you're angry, you, you can't focus. You know, I allowed the anger to become anguish which means, you know, I was full of hatred, you know, and right. I wanted to make vengeance, you know, I wanted to be mine, not the Lord's. Mm -hmm. And I was a new Christian, January 16, 2003. This is what saved my life. I gave my life to Christ right before I went to Iraq. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Father. Yes, most definitely. And then, but, uh, so then I was given three days infirmary, and then I went back in the lines. Well, um, I was in Camp Warhorse in Bakuba, Iraq, in August 15th of 2003. This is the second time I got injured. I'm running from a mortar attack, I'm running for a safety bunker. My legs outrun my body. So basically I'm running, my legs outrun my body, I fall, I'm doing a face plant. As I fall, there's a 60 millimeter mortar that landed three feet in front of me my that did not Lord. explode. Mm. But because it's gravel, mm. it embedded in gravel, so the gravel became shrapnel, which cut me up from head to toe. My I felt Lord. like I had bees stinging in my face, my neck, wow. and my chest. And I just I felt imagine like, if you hadn't have fallen though. You know, it saved my life. Yes. It was one of the greatest things. I couldn't realize it at the time, you know, saying right. until after writing my second book, Life After the Fall. But, you know, but what, what I realized is that in life, things are going to trip you up, Robin. But if we can't focus on the things that trip us up, we've got to focus on the one who can lift us up. Amen. Because the thing is, God is the only one that can take the things that once mortified us and now mm -hmm. use them to fortify us. That's good. That's good. So then that was your first injury. You have yeah. a second, D and oh. then the third is the one you really want yes. to emphasize. Uh -huh. Yep. And we talked about the second injury. And so I was, I was oh, taken the to the medics. Injury, yes, yeah, was I was the fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fall, the Sorry. first fall. Yeah. And so I was taken to the medics, mm -hmm. and I, I was put on light duty for two weeks because I, I didn't want to go home. I refused to go home. There were people more severely injured than I were, uh, was. Um, and so then they gave me light duty and said, okay, now you're going to just be on a lot of duties and this, this, and the other. Back then we didn't have public, public plumbing, so we had to burn our own waste. Mm. So I'm outside the gate, so I'm outside the, the compound altogether, and I'm burning waste. And I asked permission to cease the burning, which means to stop the burning, and they denied my, for me to cease the burning. What happened was the enemy began to walk mortars into the camp using the light from the fire. So mm. I'm a signal, Gosh. and I asked to cease the burning, and they denied it. Did you understand at the time that you were a signal and that the no. enemy, no? Okay. No, I, I couldn't tell. I didn't want to be a boy crying wolf on that point. Right. So then when I finally realized it was too late, I had mortars or bonus, and these were not 60s. The 60 millimeter mortar has a kill radius, which means when it blows up, it has a kill radius of about 25 meters. Now the 82 millimeter mortar, which is what they were shooting now, has a kill radius of about anywhere from 60 to 75 meters. So we're looking for at least twice as much kill radius as mm -hmm. before. So this is the bigger rounds. But we shot 155 howitzers. So we have a huge amount of kill radius. And then the mortar men's behind us, they shoot 120s mm -hmm. usually. So it's a lot, so it's a lot smaller rounds than mm -hmm. what we're used to hearing, seeing. So I didn't know exactly where to deter. And I couldn't see where the, the time of flight and where the enemy round were coming. So when I realized that the mortars were actually coming into the camp, I flipped the stuff over and I took off running from my point. And so as I'm running past the latrine, I felt a gust of wind basically hit me in my chest and throw me, sorry, him and my mic, um, hit me in my chest and throw me over to the left. And I felt warmth in my right leg, but I didn't realize I got hit. All I heard was and it was shrapnel that hit the, the, hit the latrine, but everything, what shrapnel is, is it's all this metal and everything, but if it hits something like an object, then shrapnel becomes wood, glass, whatever, whatever's in the way. Sure. Uh -huh. Like the rocks became shrapnel when the round hit it, even though it didn't explode. It, it's just debris right. is what it is. And so um, I got back up, continued running because of the adrenaline so much. And I could see my safety bunker. So I'm running full speed to my safety bunker. Now, I, 
I ran my two miles in 9.47, just jogging. I was the second fastest runner in my whole battalion. So I was very fast on my feet, so I could see my way out. Before I made the bunker, I fell into what's called a spider hole. It's a 10 to 12 foot chamber. I hit my head going down, but I had a Kevlar on, so I thought I was good. But I landed on my ankle sideways and basically my kneecap straight up. Mm. So I broke my right ankle four places, my left ankle three, shattered both my knees, splinter fracture on both my legs. When I got back from my rack, I, I began to have pain in my rectum area and found out I had three breaks in my tailbone that were just splintering up. Wow. So I just tell people that Humpty Dumpty lives. <laughs> I make a joke of it more than anything else. You sure. Know. Yeah, wow, not, what a story. And you know, you're you're literally one of so many that yes. um, you know we have heard about, but so many that we haven't heard about. But the difference in your story is um, how God has led you and, yes. and brought you into ministry and how he's been healing you. Yes, most definitely. You know, one of the things that you said to me prior to us coming on was mm -hmm. God um, spoke to you in a sense through Dave Reavers. Yes. I know he's one yes. of your mentors and mm -hmm. he's written the uh, foreword for your book, Life After the Fall, and you ministered with him for a period of time. Correct. But would you share the story about Dave's face and what the Lord yes, spoke definitely. to you, please. Okay. Uh, this is this is right after I had met Dave. Um, he invited me out. I had just written my first book, uh, some of my life lessons, and uh, he invited me out, and me and my family out to a retreat, uh, a family camp mm -hmm. that they were hosting at the H E B uh, family camp there in uh, Leakey, Texas. Right. And so uh, we went there, had a great time. It's very first time I was able, able to see my kids open up and be real and just enjoy themselves around other people. At first they're very clam and closed because we were, because they understand the healing aspect of what we did and I didn't understand the abuse that because of my isolated state that I had put myself in that I, tr I, I truly believed at one time Robin that isolation was my independence and it was mm -hmm. a false it was a, it was a, a false perception which is, which is deception. And it affected your family. It affected my family and yes. I didn't realize the effects of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like having a car that's out of alignment. You don't understand the wear and tear that you're right. putting on that vehicle Absolutely. because you're not maintaining it that's properly. A, yep, that's true. It's a really good analogy. And so as we were at the family camp, I'm listening to Dave minister to us and everything, and I see his face. And, and I said, God, what is it that, I, that he has that I don't have? Mm -hmm. And I've asked this twice in my life. I asked this when the day before I gave my life to Christ, I'm yelling at my wife, I'm drinking alcohol, I'm doing different things here. And my wife's telling me I'm tearing my marriage apart. It's before I went to Iraq. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I said, and I yell at her, and I said, what is it that you have that I don't have? And she said these words, Robin, that changed my life forever. She said, you've got religion and I've got Jesus. Wow, that is powerful. I had chosen to be bound into a state, right. you know what I'm saying, of mind. I had trapped myself into a mind, uh, into an idea or a thought that mm -hmm. I was self-righteous, that mm -hmm. I was, you know, saying yeah. conformed that is religion. in my own image. Yeah, that it was. Religion. It's religion. It's religion. It's limited. It's yes, the biggest it cult in the entire world. Mm -hmm. It is. Yes. Um, and with that being said, so when I saw, when I saw, when, when I asked the same question, I said, Lord, what is it that Dave Reaver has that I don't have? And the Lord showed me his face, and his face began to pulsate like a heart. And the Lord said, that's your heart. Hmm just scarred and yeah just I mean the thing is I had covered the thing is mm -hmm. the, the concept of it is the fact that that I covered my scars but Dave has embraced his mm -hmm. and so from that day forward I took my braces off and I put them on the outside of my pants and they said well you can't really do it like that and I did it anyways it wasn't these braces it was another set of braces I had mm -hmm. that I was helping the, the VA build a new contract for and everything but that's how I began to walk again Mm -hmm. And I, I realized that the, the less I focus on myself and the more, so the, the less I focus on myself, my situation and my circumstances, mm -hmm. the more I was healed and the more, and the less pain I had. Because what I learned that is, is that, is, is that, that is so true. That, it, it, that I, if I have pain, if pain is a constant because, you know, in child labor, you have pain, but you can do one or two things. Either you can continue to push mm -hmm. and you see the deliverance of it, you know what I'm saying? Because you're delivering something, you're actually making something. Right. From your broken point, you're now making something of value, yes, right? Yes, something of life. Yes, something of life. You know, you're birthing that aspect. Mm -hmm. Or you could stop pushing, and it dies inside you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that was that seed. Either it was going to die in me, or I was going to allow it to be birthed. And that's what Still Hope's all about. And but that came through seeing seeing that. And so I, I realized that Dave has embraced his scars and if he can embrace his scars then I can embrace my scars and I can help other people praise the Lord and so that's what still hopes all about Amen. is helping people to find that spark of hope and find that seed of hope that would bring a tree of life 
and they will have a fruitful and multiply all over the world. Wow, that is powerful. I know we we have such a need in our area, and it's not just in our area. Yes. I know you're up in Fort Worth yes. right now. Uh -huh. Your office is up in Fort Worth, and uh, but part of your desire is to have some centers. Yes, correct. Correct. And uh, so we're going to talk about that later. But I wanted mm -hmm. you to share uh, in your ministry. You have several divisions of yes, steel. Mm -hmm. Hope. One of them's warriors, rehabilitation, education, missions, and special needs. Yes, ma'am. Uh, share a little bit about the warriors. Those are not just military No, they're vets. not. They're not. Um, we define a warrior as anybody who protects and serves. Um, I've been told so many times, I've been called wounded. Mm -hmm. And then they put the word warrior right after wounded. Mm -hmm. And this has been a brand that people have ran with, this, that, and the other. Well, even doing golf tournaments with Dave's organization, this, that, and the other, you know, people would call me, hey, you're such a great wo wounded warrior. Well, my perception of wounded was being weak. Mm -hmm. And there was a fact to that. And that I believe many of the, the men and women that have been injured see yeah. that as a weakness, yeah. and it's not. Yeah. And the thing is, I realized that my, my scars are just part of, part, part of is, they're not my definition. Right. You know what I'm saying? They they don't don't they don't define me. They refine me, and it's part of the they process. Can. Of, Amen. Yes, you know, and if that's what's about when you Amen. embrace them, when you begin yes. to find the healing in that. Because if pain is a constant, and we have it no matter what, why can't we turn our pain into a passion and live a life full of purpose and without excuse? Amen. That's powerful. And so, so your warriors yes, division is yes. warriors firefighters, is anybody who protects and serves, and their families. So EMS, EMS, firefighters, firefighters police, first responders. You got volunteer fire departments mm -hmm. that never get any any recognition mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like Nolanville's smaller you know they're now should being built and everything now right. but they started with volunteers you know when we, when west uh, yes. when the plant up at west exploded Correct. um there were a lot of first responders killed yes and um, I found out recently uh, you know the ministry that they needed um, actually didn't get to them yes uh, and so many of them and I've met a couple of them mm -hmm. have lived with the aftermath of that and are just now coming into programs coming into um, chaplains ministering to them and so you know you're right about the warriors and mm -hmm. if they don't get uh, well divinely connected the way you were Correct. Um, but if we don't step in if we don't make available the services yes. necessary uh, this goes on for years and years and affects their families as you've said yes, so share with us about the rehabilitation okay. education we've got about 10 minutes oh that's fine yeah so rehabilitation is spiritual mental and physical aspect it's about connecting the heart it's about removing the calluses from your heart you know what I'm saying? The ones, like, like I talked about, God is the only one that can take something that once mortified you and now it can fortify you. Amen. Because it, without the pebbles in life that we trip on, there would never be nothing to stabilize the pillars because pebbles are what stabilize pillars. See, if, you know, let's go into do a little bit of a, a biblical aspect here or whatever, but if, if the devil would have saw the potential of David, he would never love him and face Goliath. Truth. See, the thing is, how you know you're a threat against the enemy is the enemy can't even see you. Because the thing is, you're invisible to him because mm -hmm. you're not doing it by yourself. Your potential is invisible. You're doing it for, uh, because the thing is, look at Samson. They, can, they had to search for Samson's strength, his source of strength, because it, it, I don't think he was such a huge physique man. You know what I'm saying? I believe he was an average, a, average looking man, but I know he's very you know, strong, mm -hmm. but I believe his strength, can, I know his strength came from the Lord. Mm -hmm. and Absolutely. It, and, and the thing is, without him losing, physically losing his eyes, he was never spiritually seen. Mm -hmm. And so he died three ways he died to his sight. You know what I'm saying? Then he died to his, you know, actually, he died to the spirit first. You know what I'm saying? Because he actually shook off the spirit of God, didn't he know it? Okay? And so he, he lost that aspect there. Then he lost his eyes, and then he physically died. Mm -hmm. But that's the three ways we die. Mm -hmm. and the thing is, first off, we lose, you know what I'm saying, the, we lose the sense of our connection, of to, connection the Lord. to the Lord. Yes. Then we lose the vision of it. Mm -hmm. and, then, you know, and it says, without vision, people perish. perish. Mm -hmm. So that we're on a road. And I truly believed at one time that my isolation was my independence. Robin, mm -hmm. there was a time in my life where I truly believed, because I was such a big, big guy and everything back then, that I didn't need help, that nothing could hinder me, that I was invincible at one right. time. That was my mindset. And I tell people, pride was my kryptonite. 
Mm -hmm. And the thing is now I've embraced that kryptonite. So now it is now fortifying me. It's not horrifying me. It's not, it's not making things. You mentioned another thing, yes. and I think we see this with a lot of the vets and, that come back, the wounded warriors that yes. come back. Mm -hmm. It's so hard for them to not isolate. Yes. And then it's hard for them to receive help, too, because they see it as being weak. Correct. You know, and, Correct. you know, built into the character of a warrior or mm -hmm. a first responder, you know, is rescuing other people, not Correct. being rescued yourself. Yes, so most how, you know, so at, yours was a process, yes. and I'm sure what you provide for others yes. is in a process, so your rehabilitation really is a process. Yes. Education is a definitely. part of that process, yes. truly, um, and then, um, you know, uh, providing the education yes. of, and the awareness mm -hmm. of what the, you know, the individuals need to recover. Talk to me about missions for okay. a second. Yeah, missions, we have two areas of missions we work with. We work with global missions. Uh, we actually have an NGO in Lagos, Nigeria, where we provide, uh, we have a YES program with the Youth Empowerment Services. We give women and children a voice in Africa. Mm, and wonderful. we actually birthed that organization. It's called Steel Hope Foundation over there in Lagos, Nigeria. We're an NGO. And how that was birthed was the Lord told me to put a seed in the desert. And, and, and two weeks later, is when, and I thought we were just going to work with sanitation and education over there. Mm -hmm. Didn't realize we would be underlining human trafficking because two weeks wow. after we after we birthed the organization over there, then that's when the 276 girls got taken captive over there. Wow. And so it really just so God had boots on the ground exactly. to help. It, you the know. sea the sea was already in the ground, mm -hmm. and 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 then we, and then the, the resources just came, and I mean God has made it where that that organization right as right now other than salaries is already self-sufficient. Right, you gave me a little card that I'm trying to find. Here it is. Yeah, there it um, is. About mm -hmm. this, uh, our heart beats for others yes. and your nonprofit organization, it says, designed mm -hmm. to help others. Your mission is to build, equip, empower others to be people who will continually believe, expand, stand, transform, encourage, enlighten, and love around the world. And you have a program called uh, Steel United 1%. Yes, ma'am. Tell viewers yes, about that. Well, you know, that's very powerful. <clears throat> God gave me a vision several years ago. Uh, I was actually in a, um, I, I was in a conference uh, in New Orleans, and it was actually for a coffee business that we were doing at the time. And I saw 12,000 people of all, of all nations, of all creed, of all religions, singing the Hallelujah song. Mm -hmm. And they were singing in harmony. And I was like, my God, if these people can come together, 12,000 people can sing despite their religion, despite their relationship, despite their gender, despite their, you know, their nationality, all this aspect come together for coffee. How much more can we come together for a cause? And then come I started on. to think about 9-11, and then I realized, and, and then God gave me a vision of getting 1% of Americans to give $1 one time. It's called a seed, the mm -hmm. seed of hope. Mm -hmm. That's $3.16 million. What we're going to do is we're going to take that money and we're going to build our first facility. From there, we're going to take 90% of all the proceeds and we're going to put it back into expand and explode these centers all over the United States. What, what are the name of the centers? They're going to be called Steel Freed Freedom Centers. Okay, and that which you carry and have birthed and, and are already participating too, on, you'll have a center for them and you're planning on one actually here in the Fort Hood area. Yes, ma'am, I am. Uh, because um, we're going to start there and then from there, we'll, um, the, the vision is w to within five years is to work with the other. It's not just about still hope. Still right. hope is about connecting with other resources, other people. When you have to. Yeah, we have to because we can't do it alone. I mean, we would yeah. exhaust ourselves trying to just hold one center together, and then we wouldn't be able to. But the thing is, if if we, what I realized, I realized Revelation, Robin, is that people can see. A lot of people have told me. I said, man, you're wasting your resources. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your, everything. All they see is a cup being poured out. Mm -hmm. But what they don't see is they don't see the invisible hand of God that's pouring into our cup. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I stop pouring out to others, God's going to stop pouring out Amen. to me. Amen. That's a good word. That's and a good so word. The, so the United, the still United 1% is connecting people together for a cause. Because if they came together on 9-11 for chaos, how much more together can we come together for a cause? I agree, and, and the need is so great. It really is. I know yeah. I'm watching Fort Hood itself transform. Yes. yes. Um, 
you know, to be a healing center, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, out of the woundedness, I'm believing that Fort Hood is going to become a healing center. Yes. You know, uh, yeah. we have a huge new hospital in the older hospital, and much of the newer uh, building that is going on on Fort Hood mm -hmm. is all designed around families and, and soldiers in yes. this recovery process. So yes. there's many to be connected with, and that's wisdom. Yeah, the vision of Still Hope is actually to see people become fully restored, mm -hmm. recover, rediscover, and rebuild their life <clears throat> one step at a time. It's a process. The thing is, we, so what happens, Robin, is a lot of times we get so, so caught up in the process that we forget that the process is not the purpose. But without the process, right. you know what I'm saying, we, we never have a purpose. I call my pain a pearl because it's through the process of enduring that pain that that element, that natural element that's considered on the, on the scale of a gem, you know what I'm saying, but it's a natural mineral element. And it's the only, it's the only only mineral on earth that I know of that, that, that is perfect in, in, in itself. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because the pain that it endures makes it perfect. A gem's not perfect. A gem has to be cut, polished, and mm -hmm. it, it's got to go through a refinement process. Mm -hmm. You don't just look on the ground and say, hey, here's steel. Steel is formed. It's not found. Mm -hmm. We've got to go through a process of being broken before we can ever be That's made. That's really, really good. Um, your program in particular yes, focuses on the spiritual side, not just the emotional side. And there Correct. are many organizations that are focused more on the emotional side Correct. and the physical side. But yes. yours is all of the above. Talk about the spiritual component that you provide as a ministry. Yeah, most definitely. What well, the thing is, I, I am ordained minister um, and with that being said I can take my spiritual sense that I have and I can put it into principles of life and that's Amen. what we do for life coaching that's what we do for marriage coaching that's what we do for our peer support groups it's, it's, we don't focus on the religion aspect we focus on the relationship that's good. because the relationship was what gonna, was going to make break and yet refine someone to be who they are mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying because Amen. I mean we trip and fall in life and so, and we a lot of times we look on the fact. Okay, people, are, people are waiting. For, you know, I'm saying to, to, you know, to to see me fall. No, they're waiting to see who's picking you up. Mm -hmm. We all fall. Absolutely. But absolutely. when we fall, what are you going to do after that? And that's what yeah. life after the fall is about. And that's why I wrote the book. That's why Crystal has the Adventures of Steel. That's our story, as you put into an animation story that we can use for life coaching, marriage coaching, and family coaching. It's a children's book. We can use it in all aspects. Amen. This book right here, it has a little. See, this is what's so powerful about Still Hope is the fact there's not one scripture in this book, but yet you read it. There, the Word of God is nothing but seeds. It's a book of seeds. Uh -huh. And it, thinks it has all the potential in the world. This dove is named J.C. That represents Jesus Christ. Amen. But this book can go in any public library because it doesn't have anything. It has principles that's in there. That's wonderful. And we well, use the principles and that connects with the scriptures. Oh, well, your story is incredible. And I know your website's been up on the screen several times. Awesome. Um, it's really been a blessing to get to know you. Thank you for Thank what you, you do. Much, Thank you for serving and yes. for really serving those that take care of us and lay their lives down every day. Appreciate you being here. God bless you all for watching. I know your hearts have been touched check out the website of uh, the ministry called Steel Hope and I know you'll be blessed because I'm sure many of you know individuals that could really be blessed by connecting to this ministry. Thank you.